welcome to the Fight to Fight with me, Holly Donovan. And today we have a very special guest, someone who I'm really excited about as well. Um, so, uh, please welcome two times former world champion, first ever Scottish female world champion as well. We have Hannah Rankin. Hello. Hello. Lovely to see you. You too. How are you? How are you doing? Uh, doing really well, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just got back from training. So yeah, be feeling good and uh, working hard at the moment in the gym. So yeah, I'm in a good That's mood. Good. Oh, good. I'm very, very glad. I'm so, so sorry that you're like come home knackered and you're like <laughs> doing an interview. It's fine. <laughs> All part of it. All part of it. Yeah. I want to start by saying congratulations. You know, you're two time former world champion. I'm pretty sure you're going to go for a third this year. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and I love the fact that you did it in Scotland. Um, you retained it in Scotland as well. Yeah. Um, how does it feel? You're written down in history forever. How does that feel? Do you know what? That is still probably one of my, my biggest achievements, actually, to be to be actually in the history books for Scotland as their first ever female world champion. And that can never be changed. No one can ever now do it before me or anything like that. So it's kind of a, it's quite a special thing to be able to say. Um, but like I always say, my dad likes to bring my dad to earth. And he's like, well, at least you're the answer to a pub quiz question, Hannah. <laughs> I was like, thanks, Dad. You know, slightly more <laughs> But I'm a pub, I answer to a pub quiz, so it's yeah. good. <laughs> it's all right. Top marks of pub quiz, that's fine. Yeah, but I'm really, I'm really, really proud. And the fact that I got to defend my two world titles at home and headline at the Hydro, that's probably a very close second to being such a special moment for me because first female to do that and obviously following the likes of Ricky Burns, Josh Taylor, two people that I totally idolise in Scotland. Um, so, yeah, I was very proud about that. And we had such an amazing turnout for that fight. And yeah. a whole plethora of people came, you know, it was a really different sort of um, attendance for the fight. We had lots yeah. of young girls, young young boys and girls. We had grands, mums, daughters, the whole lot. There was a lot more women there and it was yeah. a, a really special, special night. So those two things for me and doing it for Scotland. Yeah. Best, sort of thing, yeah. Oh, it's incredible. I also heard that you used to work at the SS Arena. Is that right? <laughs> you used to pull pints there. Yeah, I did. And it was really, really a very surreal moment when I was walking over there as the champion to defend my world titles. And I was like, I used to rock up here for like the Arctic monkeys, work on like <laughs> 30 man bars, pulling pints of people. And wow. it's crazy where you can go from to, you know, yeah. what you can do in a few years, you know. You just be reminded of that. Did someone pull you a, you a pint afterwards? <laughs> yeah, I, do that. I don't really drink, so like, oh, no. No, but um, yeah, no, it was, uh, I got given a, a champ champagne toast afterwards, which was very nice actually from everybody. So. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. I love it. I want to talk about your last fight as well, because I know it obviously didn't go your way. However, what a fight. It was, you know, it still deserves congratulating because, you know, we're at this point now where women's boxing, everyone's looking out for it. And every time there's a fight like that, it's proving, you know, it's proving a point. Look how brilliant this is. Yeah. And um, how, how did you find that fight? So for me, it's a really tricky one, obviously. Um, probably OK to talk about it now. But yeah. uh, after the fight with Alejandra in Scotland and her going to hospital, um, it was a really difficult thing for me to deal with. And, you know, I, I, I've always been that person. I'll just push on, work for it. Let's go. We'll go and do another fight. And, you know, because it was an amazing night for me. But obviously the downside of it was Alejandra being in hospital. Yeah. And, um, you know, I had to deal with all of that and then by the time we got to fight week and stuff with Terry and things and I walked out on fight night and I was like not ready to be here yeah. uh, but I didn't know that until the night you know and uh, you know that wasn't me in the ring on fight night and I gave it my all I gave it everything but it wasn't truly like a real representative representation of Hannah Rankin yeah. on the night and so for me it was devastating to lose my titles um, but you know they say hindsight is like a wonderful thing and all that oh, yeah. so <laughs> You learn so much from these things. And like, I've always been about that. You know, learn from every experience that you, you have because then you can build on it. So like, obviously this year for me is a big year. I want to, you know, go back and get my world titles back. I'll hopefully have a rematch with Terry Harper. Yeah. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of things there, but I've heard a lot of people say it was a great fight. Um, and it's funny, obviously being the person in there, you yeah. know, you can't really appreciate that, but I'm, I'm glad yeah. people enjoyed it. Absolutely. Do you think that it held you back slightly? Were you scared to use your power? Were you, did something- I don't think it was that. I think it was a, it's more of a, you know, they say boxing is like a mental thing, isn't it? It's like 90% yeah. mental. So like, you know, 
everything gone well in training. My, you know, I had fantastic camp. I was ticking all my boxes and everything. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> yeah, no, I felt I felt good uh, all the way up until it. And then, you know, on, on that week, I said, you know, there was a lot of pressure on me and, you know, a few little demons from that last fight, which came came out for me. And so I think it was more, yeah, it it didn't allow me to showcase really truly what I can do in the ring. I was a bit kind of stilted in it and stuff and, and a bit kind of, ugh. Yeah. but um, yeah, so I, you know, that's why this year is going to be a big year for me because yeah. I, I, I managed to like understand where that all came from mm -hmm. and I, so I'm now able to move on and like push yeah. forward and go and get what I want. So Absolutely. It's that mental game as well. I think people don't appreciate, you know, how, how much your brain has to be in sync with your body. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing with boxing that's probably one of the hardest things is like, if you're like, you can be in the best shape of your life, but if you're mentally not fully prepared or fully ready to be in there, then nothing's going to help you until you're mentally ready to be doing that. So, yeah. and boxing is a hard sport as well, because like, if you think you're going to get hit, you probably get probably hit. Well. <laughs> <laughs> like so ready. Yeah. it's all about commitment and, you know, and being confident in what you're doing and stuff like that. So uh, yeah. the mental side of, of boxing is huge. And it's why a lot of people struggle when they finish the sport as well, because we have such incredible highs as boxers. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, it, it, there's nothing in the world compares to getting your arm raised as a world champion. Like there is nothing out there. I mean, the closest thing for me is probably musically um a huge concert in a very famous concert hall with a famous conductor and a big yeah. night and it just going well it's that same sort of adrenaline excitement yeah. and buzz but um yeah it means that when you finish boxing you're still looking for that so you've got to have lots of things in place but yeah, yeah. the mental side of it is a big big side of boxing it's like it needs to be fed <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're gonna keep it going or it'll just crumble yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, I would love to rewind and go back to how it all began, because um, I know you came to boxing quite late, but, yeah. but you had martial arts experience. Um, so, so talk to me. What how, what came first? How did it come about? So, um, I I did some taekwondo when I was a kid. Me and my sisters, we we all got put into taekwondo classes. My mom was brilliant. She always gave us opportunities to go and do clubs after school, try things out. But she had really strict rules on it. She was like, if you're gonna do it, because we lived in the middle of nowhere, it meant that she was our taxi basically. Oh, okay, so she was like, if you're gonna do anything, I want you to commit to it for a yeah. good amount of time. So we all got put into Taekwondo and I think also it was her way of like allowing me and my sisters to fight, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. under the supervision <laughs> of someone else. Um, but I absolutely love Taekwondo. I love like the discipline of it. Like also the fact that you're always learning new things, growing and, and everything like that. It just gave me such confidence when I was younger. Yeah. Um, but I went into my music career, uh, ended up going on to, principal study bassoon at the Royal Conservatory of Glasgow uh, in Scotland and then also came down to Royal Academy of Music to do my master's. Now it wasn't until I came back down here to do my master's that I decided to get back involved with combat sports for fitness. Okay. Uh, yeah because I stopped taekwondo when I was probably about 12, 13 because of my music and stuff. I was actually really yeah. focused on that so I kind of regret it a little bit like I wish I got on to see where I could have gone but yeah it's one of those things which it kind of prepared me for life you know loads of different things like the the discipline that's involved in a combat sport and yeah. um, that sort of teamwork element and working with your coach and stuff that those things will teach you things for for the future so it was yeah. a great starting point um yeah. when I came back to it when I moved down here for my master's um I came back into gym box because I, I, I specifically okay. picked the gym because I was like yeah. oh they do Thai boxing you know yeah. they do things like that so I was like okay well I'll go there do combat yeah. so I got there met my coach Noel Callan I uh, also met Derek Sweet D Williams who was my very first manager okay. um, and he uh, they they got me into boxing I just totally fell in love with it um, but at the same time I was dealing with a sort of a personal situation with my mum. She got diagnosed with cancer after my first term down here. Awesome. So, yeah, so it was a really difficult time. And unfortunately, she passed away six months later. And it was such a quick, a, a quick wow. time for me. Like, you know, like suddenly she was sick and then she was gone, you know. And boxing at that point in time became a, a huge kind of 
I don't know, release for me and, and yeah. sort of a support network of people that weren't my family or people that knew me because yeah. my mother was very much involved in my music career. So, yeah. you know, so for me, it was very difficult and uh, boxing kind of was, was there for me and it, it kind of saved me in a really dark yeah. time in my life. So, yeah, I think when I, when I started to really get into it, I wanted to give as much back to it as possible. So yeah. you know, I got into doing some white collar fights, uh, raised money for charity, yeah. I wanted to take it further um, and I think even now at this point kind of 18 19 fights in I still I still see it as what can I give back to boxing you know what can I do yeah. yeah so much for me and you know if, if that hadn't happened I probably would never be in boxing so it's one of those kind of bittersweet yeah. things but my mom never saw me fight so um, wow. for me it's kind of like every time I go out of the ring I represent her you know and uh that's why it, I, I'm so attached to it and like so emotionally involved in what I do. Yeah. So, yeah, I know that that's how I got into boxing. That was in my early twenties, wow. um, and just found a passion for it and loved it. And uh, yeah, just that's, that's incredible. What I'm about. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. That must be like, I mean, was there a place to put your frustration? Were you angry? I was angry. Yeah, yeah. I, I was angry because my mum had worked so hard, like with us three kids, like. I've got two younger sisters, all three of us really independent uh, young women. We all, we're all working in actually male dominated environments. They're both in farming like my parents. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm in uh, boxing, of course. Yeah. So um, it's definitely one of those things where like I was so frustrated and, and annoyed because she, she didn't drink heavily. <laughs> she didn't smoke. She had a really good diet. She was a very healthy person. And yeah. for her to get cancer and then to die from it was just it's like the ultimate kick in the teeth for somebody yeah. who lives their life really well and is a great person yeah so for me I was really angry and, and boxing was there it was a one time where I could like work out so much like for a split second be so tired I couldn't forget oh, I could goodness. forget everything yeah so yeah it was um yeah it was definitely a difficult time and I think a lot of people find boxing a, a difficult time in their life yeah yeah and it's one sure. of those things and and that's why I'm such a big advocate for it being taught to young kids and mm. they were getting into schools and they're, they're thinking about doing something in prisons as well here in the UK which is amazing yeah absolutely yeah there's so that much place. you can do for people yeah so. oh that's incredible it's that outlet isn't it and yeah yeah how did you manage to uh go well I guess I guess you never stopped doing the music but no. I can imagine that being really difficult because obviously I find music very emotive and struggling with, with with memories and emotion how did you like separate it or did did the boxing help you go back into the music so I'm um, all the way through my mom being sick and me actually starting boxing and um, she wouldn't let me not go to uni so like she was so yes. proud that I got a place at the World Academy of Music I was the only bassoon yes. to be accepted in my year for masters so it was a, a massive thing and so I wasn't allowed to not go but yeah. My staff, the staff and the teachers at the Royal Academy of Music are amazing people. They totally took it, like took me under their wing. They knew that I was going to be under pressure, probably quite emotional a lot of the time, but they still supported me and gave me everything I needed to do to like be successful, which I, I can't really thank them enough for. And it's, yeah. it's nice for me. I think this coming year, I've got an opportunity to go back and speak to students at the Academy. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I'm really excited yeah. about that. Um, but yeah, so they were great at that time. And it was just, um, yeah, it was good. I had to finish my master's. Yeah. So I was, still, I was still doing my master's and my degree when I started. Still doing that. <laughs> yeah. But for my very final recital, my uh, coach, Noel Callan, he, because I used to suffer quite badly from performance anxiety. It was something that I struggled with for solo playing. Yeah. Um, I really struggled to actually talk to people. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Doing great. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? If, if you told me I could do this stuff now, 15 years ago, I would be, I would have laughed at you. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. Um, so now, like, so I did lots of work on, like, my confidence, but boxing gave me a confidence to perform. Yeah. It gave me the confidence to go out on stage. And for my final recital, my coach, he came and we ran it like a boxing match. So, no, right. yeah, so we did the, the pre-prep in the corner. So out, outside before we went on stage, did yeah. the breathing, the talking, we chatted through it. I went out, played my first piece, came back, came off stage after the first piece. We had some water, like it would be in a <laughs> Yeah. 
and do you know what? It's probably one of the best performances I ever did. And so boxing's been that amazing kind of thing, which really boosted my performance abilities yeah. as a musician um, and gave me a real confidence uh, to enjoy being in the spotlight and it yeah. is performing and doing what I love. Um, so I can't thank it enough for that as well, really. So oh, that's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. What about like um, combinations? Like, uh, do you ever use like music rhythm to try and, I know, I think it was Joe Calzaghe, his dad, he was doing it as a musician. Do you do that as well? So when I first started, um, Noel used to, uh, like when he was teaching me combinations and he wanted me to like, you know, really sync that body shot in or do that there. Yeah. He's like, put it to a rhythm in your head and then yeah. we'll do it again. And I learned a lot of my original sort of stuff by rhythms in my head that I no, could right, see, awesome. like I could see the musical notes. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, and that, that's how I learned to start off with. So it's, it is about rhythm. And, but sometimes now as I've got further into my career, like, I don't like to train with music. It's not really what I like to do because I find that I listen to the beat and I listen yeah, to what you're going in that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it distracts me, you know? So uh, I tend to, people find it strange, but I tend to train in silence and, and yeah. I listen to stuff. But it's just because of my background, I think. Yeah. No, I completely understand that. Yeah. yeah. They say if it's music, you're in the music. <laughs> How can you? <laughs> but I like music when I'm running. I like it if yeah. I'm doing S and C. You know, I, I do enjoy it. But when I'm boxing and I'm trying to learn stuff and focus on it, yeah. I'm like, I can't, I can't have that on as well. <laughs> just no, just no. Yeah. <laughs> how do you um so so how do you protect yourself? Because when I first saw about you, I was like, okay. When I went to a boxing class, I hurt my hand. And then um, I, I'm a violinist, so I couldn't play the violin. And I was uh, like, okay. How, so I think about you. What? How do you protect yourself? Like, how do you make sure that, because I'm guessing you need your mouth, you need yeah. your hands. How do you do this? So um, obviously my embouchure, the shape of my mouth is really yeah. important. Um, and even now when I go back to doing concert and stuff, I'll pre-prep for that concert much more than I ever would have done before because yeah. I'm not playing every single day. And your embouchure is, is a shape in your mouth, which actually it changes. If you're not playing all the time, it won't be the same. And, yeah. and you, you won't have the lip to play, which what we say is like, which means you, the muscle in your lip won't be able to won't actually it. perform. No, it won't, it dies. <laughs> um, and it's like, I try and explain this to people. It's like, if you're, if you're doing um, chin-ups in the gym, for example, yeah. right? Then you stop doing it for like five weeks and then you come back and you'll never do the same amount as you were before. You just yeah. physically can't do it. So it's one of those things where you have to keep your lip in and it's the muscles in your face that actually get tired. Yeah. Um, so I had proper, like, obviously for sparring and stuff, I always have a good gum shield, uh, yeah. you know, dent dentist gum shield so that everything's protected. Um, and, you know, when I first started, I learned some defense first because obviously I said to my coach, I was like, no, I cannot, I cannot. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's, bless him, he's been actually wrapping my hands like professionally since I started. Like I don't wear hand wraps, oh, never worn hand wraps. Um, mm -hmm. But I started off when I first came to London and after that, mm -hmm. when I started to go more into the boxing, he's like, well, wrap your hands. But it means that he's had loads of practice wrapping hands. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I get, I make um, hand wraps every kind of two weeks. Okay. Um, and so it's like the gauze ones. Yep. And so then I'll, I'll cut them off and then I'll reuse them while I'm training and then I'll make them again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's different ways of doing that. So that, that protects my hands. So I've um, yeah. only ever had like one or two hand problems, but they've healed up quite well. So it's fine. That's really good. You're super protected. It's yeah. not like you go into a sparring with like one of those American football helmets. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, like, I, I can't no, I can't I want people wear these like full face like yeah. a transformer <laughs> no you've got to be a boxer as well you know yeah oh absolutely that's awesome so you went into so you didn't go into amateurs uh yeah. instead straight into white collar um, yeah, so I should say here, caveat this with, I did white collar and then my coach, I wanted to take it to the next level and Noel was like, yeah. right, you go and join an amateur club. I was like, well, am I going to get to train with you still? He was like, well, I'm not an amateur coach. So no, you have to go to an amateur club. But I was like, well, I don't want to do that. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because I, I'm, as a musician with all my teachers, you know, it's like I wouldn't get rid of my teacher if they were doing great things for me. Yeah. Um, just because I wanted to go to a different place. It, yeah, it, it didn't sense. work like that. So for me, it made sense. And obviously starting the sport later, it, it would have been difficult going to an amateur club uh, in my early 20s. Yeah. A little bit different, like yeah. So I decided I was like, no, it, it's not broken. I'm not going to fix it. I, I want to stay with you. So then I wanted to go professional. Uh, so he was like, well, the other option is professional. So you'll have to 
we'll see if we can get uh, your license and stuff. And he got his professional license to take me pro. Oh, wow. So we've done this right from the very beginning. It's like literally from nothing to world champion. That's so, amazing. And you stuck with that yeah. same team as well, like the whole journey. So it's been, I've changed manager. Uh, obviously, I work with Sam Kinnock these days, yeah. Scottish uh, manager. Um, it was a good connection for me to make for home, obviously, you know, like yeah. and opportunities to fight at home. Um, and but I've been with Noel all the way through. And there's been people added to the team. We've done stuff and like for um, my strength and conditioning um, and my sports science guy, Andrew Usher, he's based up in Dundee. So yeah. he's been a recent addition to my team. Massive, important part of my team, like hugely important. Um, Richard Farnan, he's my cut man. He's been my cut man from day one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So uh, he knows my face really, really well. Yeah. So knows I hate getting Vaseline put on my face. <laughs> <laughs> it does look horrible. Is it really uncomfortable? That's gross. <laughs> it's gross. It's horrible. It's just sticky and gross and horrible. So, but yeah, yeah no. And I've had him, and then um, Rich Williams. Uh, former IBO Super World World Champion. Yeah. He's also part of my team as well, and I train with him too. So, yeah, it's a small, tight knit team, yeah. and that's how it, it's always been. Even when I was in America and uh, working with Mark Taffet and Dimitri Salita, so that's yeah. it's always been a close team. And that's yeah. how. It works. That's awesome. Have yeah. you seen? Um, I'm guessing you must have done seen a big change over time. Because when I guess when you first went pro, there weren't so many female boxers kicking about. No, um, I think there's about that, 27 of us. Yeah. In the like, whole UK. How have you seen it change? How how has that helped or not helped? I don't know. It's been amazing, actually. Like this last couple of years, like 2022 was a massive year for women's boxing, like huge. Yeah. 2021 was the beginning of it. 2022, huge. This year is only going to be better as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Um, it's been incredible to see going from no women on the cards to a oh, why do you want to be a boxer you know we got you go and do anything else you need to be a boxer that's for boys yeah. to do all of that sort of stuff to changing now where we, we're like we're now household names yeah like you know yeah. you, and you see people are talking about the women on the card because we all rock up and we want to put on a show that's just how it is and we're so I think as well like we know it's a big platform we want to showcase our skills yeah and so we do and, and because there's a smaller pool of women to men, we end up having the bigger fights much more regularly than the guys do. Yeah, uh, So the best fight's the best all the time yeah. in the women's game. And, and that I, I'm glad to see that hasn't changed too much as it's got better and, and more popular. Yeah. Um, I think we're just not about weighing around, you know? <laughs> get no! On, get on yeah. and in, have some good fights. And the thing is, to be a fighter, you have to want to fight. And this is yeah. something that I truly, truly do believe in. This is like... If you want to say that you're a fighter and a boxer, then you should want to fight people. And you yeah. should want to fight against the best if you want to be the best. Exactly. So I've always run that in my whole career. And, you know, don't you can't say you want to be a fighter and then not fight people. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. And it's but, true, yeah. yeah. The, the women's women game has out. been amazing and it's been a huge increase. And now it's not called late. <laughs> when I first started, we used to call it lady boxing. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> it's, a I, I, it's a strange phrase. Um, oh, but no. yeah. yeah, no. Oh, God. It's um, but it's good. And I, I'm pleased to see that people are back it now. Like when yeah. I first started, I always used to tell a story, but when I first started, like Noel used to phone like scaffolding companies or engineering those kind of companies that normally yeah. sponsor boxes yeah and say, oh i've got this great fighter she oh we don't sponsor women oh what? that's what we used to get yeah. that all the time now fast forward five six years where i am yeah. now and people are so much more open to female fighters and i think also with women comes that extra bit of like i do a lot of outreach work i do a lot of um like i have another life outside of boxing that, yeah. people, that what people want to know about um, you know, so it's quite good when you're working with businesses to see what you can offer them if you want to go and do classes for them or do yeah. talks or do that sort of thing. Like there's a whole other way of looking at it now. And so it's not just seen as oh, female fighters. That's a bit yeah. weird. You yeah. Know? Why are you doing that? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. What kind of outreach work are you doing? Is that like boxing and music or everything or? So uh, for music, basically, I have a wind quintet and we, we go in various formats. Sometimes it's trio, quartet, quintet. It just depends who's around. Yeah. Uh, the Coriolis Quintet. And we work with Live Music Now. And they are a company that basically delivers interactive concerts inside uh, special educational needs schools or in care homes. 
which that's is an awesome. amazing part of my job actually which I really love so yeah. like, that's sort of a lot of work that we enjoy doing um so we go in we'll do an hour's interactive concert with the residents there um and it's quite nice when you're working with people who are living with Alzheimer's and dementia because you know it can really sort of spark some real emotion yes, for them. Um, yes. it's fantastic so I love doing that um and I'm ambassador, an ambassador for Music for All charity. So, yeah, th that's my music side of things. With boxing, I work with Boxwise. I'm an ambassador for Boxwise. And uh, they're a social enterprise. Um, and they have, well, let me think, it's 42 clubs in the UK now. Okay. They started yeah. with four. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But 42 all around the UK. Um, and we run a programme, which is 10 weeks long. So we use boxing to deliver and teach things like teamwork um, discipline, all of these things that you can apply in like education nice. or yeah. life or in work going forward. And at the end of it, they graduate and, and we give them options to be like, right, so if they need help into work or if they need suggestions or support for higher education, that's what we're there for. Yeah. Um, and it's a real sort of from grassroots level to helping people. Um, yeah. And it's, it's all funded by the Nick Morn Foundation. Um, and Nick's an amazing guy. He's so, such a nice guy. Um, and we've just set up in Uganda. Um, I set the first one up in South Africa. Um, I'm going to be setting up another two this year. Uh, another one in Africa and yeah. one in Brazil. So, wow. A really busy year for us. But we do everything yeah. from like, you know, we work with Ukrainian refugees. Um, yeah. We also work with... Uh, Oh, well, uh, we have a disabilities one in, in um, Wales, which is an amazing yeah. program, actually. And it's just fantastic to see the young people really develop through that, that yeah. course. It's amazing. Um, boxing, just that's what I mean. It goes through yeah. everything. So yeah. we do stuff for veterans. Anthony Crawler works with the veterans group in Manchester. So, oh, wow. that's yeah, amazing. It, it's, it's, it's really starting to take off. And as yeah. it's going global, it's going to become hopefully a full time charity. Yeah. So at the moment, it's fully funded by Nick. So the whole thing's paid for. Wow. Nice <laughs> guy. Yeah. Yeah. He pays for the gloves, the water wow. bottles, the t shirts, the courses. And the most important thing we have at the club is that young people get um, a meal every time they attend the class. So we get we give them a hot meal. And I think it's just so important, especially when you come into a community, to support that aspect of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it was such a an eye opener when we were in South Africa, because um, I had made some really good connections when I fought there. Yeah. Um, and uh, we we have a family gym that I'm quite friendly with. I feel like it's my second home. I love Cape Town. I really oh, really. Oh, that's amazing. It. Yeah. yeah. But the we had a lot of um, we had all girls for this one, so it was all young girls and all young women yeah. for the two <laughs> groups. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, so and the woman Alice, who runs, who owns the gym with her husband Neville and her son, um, they basically suggest it had to be all women because in South Africa, unfortunately, they have a real problem with um, gender-based violence. Yeah, absolutely. So we st they wanted it just to be women because otherwise they wouldn't feel confident. And we just saw these young women and young girls come come from some like abusive backgrounds, um, sexual abuse and things like that, and really just growing confidence the whole week. And that was the start of it. And they've now run three or four 10 week programs over there. And it's just been a huge success. So very, very proud of that. Very wow, proud of that. this is incredible. Yeah. And it just shows as well how like, you know, boxing saved you, it can save them, it can, it can transcend, it can just... It doesn't matter where yeah. you're from. And that's, that's the most special thing about boxing. Yeah. It doesn't matter what background you have, where you come from, who you are, yeah. what kind of, like, it doesn't matter. If you want to turn up, you want to put the work in and lace the gloves up, that's, it's there. that's a good start. Yeah. It's there for anyone, you know? Absolutely. So, how do you yeah. fit it in? It feels <laughs> like you, you do loads. How do you, how do you fit this all in? <laughs> Well, I think as a, you know, <laughs> I, well, <laughs> I would say that I am quite busy, but I like yeah. it that way. And also I'm very lucky to have, um, no problem. Um, I'm very yeah. lucky to, uh, very lucky to have Noel because he's super organized. Uh, he's like a super organized, insanely organized person. Yeah. Um, which sometimes makes me like, I want to tear my hair out because he's that kind of anally organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to be honest, like it's one of those massive things which is so important as a fighter. You need somebody to help you be organized because yeah. you're training twice a day, you're recovering um, and then you've got everything else to do. Um, but 
you know, as a team, uh, like we, we're now a company um, and there's so many things that we want to do with team ranking, which is yeah. outside of just my fighting, you know, the, the box wise side of things. As a world champion, I feel like you have a voice and, and you can yeah. give back to people. Yeah. So like for me to be at that sort of level now, I can actually give back to communities and do things. So I think like, you know, if you're talking about legacy or what do you want to leave to the sport? That's what yeah. I want to do. I want to be a fighter, be a world champion again. And yeah. I also want to give back to other people and, and help people. And, and that's really what we're yeah. about with the team ranking team. So yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So let's let's talk. I've realized I've, I've kept you for a while. <laughs> um, can I ask you about like what's next? So we've got all the plans um, with, with the charity work and then we're going for this third world title. Yeah. Where do you fancy going to Jessica, Mc, Jessica McCaskill, stealing her belts? Like where <laughs> where, where would you like? Uh, where would you like to put yourself? <laughs> So um, obviously at the moment, the women's game is like this. Yeah, all the time. Just, um, but the super well. weight division is like on fire, as is yeah. the world weight division. So there's a lot of moving pieces happening yeah. all the time. And this is what I say to people. Women's boxing is not like the guys. No. Like, you can like literally go one weekend, another fight. Somebody loses that wasn't expected to lose. Yeah. Everything changes. And suddenly you've got somebody else fighting for the belt. And there's a new world champion next month. Yeah. Um, so like women's boxing is a lot more volatile than the guys. It just changes all the time. So, you know, like when you look at somebody like Cecilia Brackhaus, when yeah. she had, uh, like, she was so successful for so long. Yeah. It's incredible in the women's game. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> so, yeah. You know, that's amazing. And she's actually come back to the Super World Weight division. So that's ah, something that I, that yeah. I love. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, for me, obviously I've got uh, a fight coming back uh, after my last fight. So yeah. uh, that'll be on a de, on the zone on Matchroom. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hopefully showcasing some great skills in that and just getting back in the win column, of course. Yeah, but absolutely. I'm ranked in the top five with nearly all of the governing bodies. I think yeah. all of them. So for me, it's going to be traversing myself to the opportunity to fight for world title again. At the moment, yeah. I'm staying at super welterweight, but I'm not adverse to going down to welterweight. You know, I can make yeah. it and uh, I'm actually big for the weight. And, you know, it's one of those things. This is like when the opportunity arises, I'll take it. You just take that's what I love about you. I feel like you never duck a fight. You're just like, yep. <laughs> What's the point? Like I said, if you yeah. want to be a fight, you've got a fight. Like that's yeah, just exactly. Um, and you know, I think it probably explains why one of my most favorite fighters of all time is Arturo Gatti. You okay. know, he was an incredible fighter. Yeah. It didn't matter, win, lose, or draw. He was in an exciting fight, and yeah. every everybody wanted to come watch him fight because he was an entertainer. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I always admire and I aspire aspire to be like you know I want people to want to come watch my fights because they know they're going to be exciting they yes. know it's going to be great yeah well you've done that you're like for me as a fan you've done that already and you're like yeah that'll be good <laughs> like yeah. it's those ones where he like took it off yeah I'll watch that one <laughs> <laughs> that'll be great uh thank you so much Hannah you have been yeah. amazing and I I I'm even more in awe after talking to you now with the amount that you do the amount that you give back and do you know what? You're going to be a world champion again this year and I'm just going to look forward to it. So yes, I can't wait, you know, and, and that's what I'm fully focused on just now. Um, but then we've got Brazil later on this year. Yeah. First project setting that up for the box wise, which is really exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, this is going to be a big year for me. A lot of people said, actually, it's funny. Um, someone said to me yesterday, 2023 is feeling like super positive year. Like already there's yeah. so many things happening and, and everybody's moving around. And I like to think of it like that. Loads of positive vibes. We've just hit the start of the year. So it was quite yeah. exciting. Absolutely. It's like January and already there are so many things that you can be excited about. And, and yeah. January sucks. I know. <laughs> it's really dull and horrible. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's skinned because it's meant too much at Christmas. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. actually, this is a positive year. And I can't wait. And like you said about the female world as well, like yeah. it, it's just getting better and better and better. And you well, know, the first yeah. the matchroom card on the fourth of February. Yes. Yeah insane it's like, just incredible and you look at those cards yeah. yeah and you're just like oh and that never would have happened like when I first started watching boxing I, I would struggle to find the female fights um and I'd even be cross about it and be like oh, I'm not watching that <laughs> <they're> female <laughs> well that card is really exciting because obviously Amanda Serrano's at the top you've got yeah. Rampa Lee on it yeah um I think Sky is on Sky Nicholson yeah, she's back, yeah. Well. yeah. um Jadesa Green I think is yes. the American, yeah. American. so you know it's actually quite it's quite like a bumper card for women, but yeah. 
so cool as at MSG. Like that, that's just epic. Yeah. For me, I almost got to fight at MSG and then we hit the pandemic. Um, no! It's still on my list of places that I want to fight, but cause I think it could be fire in the world was fight MSG. Was fight MSG. <laughs> but do you know what? You've earned it. Like you've done, you've got the CV. You've, you've had like really amazing fighters on there. Demand it. Who do you speak to? <laughs> I wish to yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> well, it's on my list of things. It's one of those things that I, I hope to manifest to, to, yeah. to this year. So, yeah. Absolutely. Visualise yeah. it. Visualise being in there. And then it will definitely happen. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much, Hannah. Um, it was great to chat to you. Thank you so much. And I will look forward to seeing you in the new year. Thank you.